So in this video, I'm going to be talking about phagocytes. And what we're going to talk about is what they are and what they do. And just the basic concepts behind it. So if you remember from a previous video, we talked about the innate immune system, just briefly. And we said they had that it had humoral and cellular arms. Now, under the cellular component of the innate immune system are phagocytes. Phagocytes. Now, the cells that are classed as phagocytes are the neutrophils, neutrophils, and the macrophages, or macrophages, however you choose to say it. Basically, these neutrophils and macrophages are immune cells in your body. Now, the neutrophils are found in the blood, and macrophages are found in the tissues. And there are various names for different types of macrophages in different tissues, but they reside in the tissue, whereas the neutrophils reside in the blood. Now, what makes them in common, what makes them phagocytes, is the fact that they undergo this process called phagocytosis. So what is phagocytosis? So if you look at the word phagocytosis, phagocytosis, and we break it down into its components. So we see phago. Phago means to devour. Devour. Cyto means cell. So phagocyte, cell which devours. And osis is basically a process. So we can see that it means process which the cell undertakes to devour. All right. So what, what these phagocytes basically do is they devour other things. They devour dead cells. They devour foreign antigens. Foreign antigens. Okay. And these antigens, as we previously mentioned, can be cells or foreign particles or, or any molecules which um, are not part of the body. So when phagocytes undergo phagocytosis, they literally, literally engulf the foreign particle. They pretty much just ingest them and swallow them, but this is the proper term for that. Now we're just going to look into the process behind phagocytosis and how these phagocytes do it. So let me just scroll down and uh, get some extra space. Okay. So if you remember from a previous video, I said that the immune system does three things. The three R's. It, firstly, it recognizes, recognize, then it responds, and then it will aim to resolve the problem. Resolve. Okay? And phagocytosis actually works in the same way. So these phagocytes have to, the phagocytes have to initially recognize what they're going to devour or ingest. So we're going to talk about that first. Now, as I previously mentioned, these phagocytes, they ingest dead cells, and they also ingest foreign antigens. Now, in order for cells to recognize things, they have receptors on their surface. Now, these receptors are molecules which are able to recognize other other specific molecules. For example, this receptor, receptor A, will be able to recognize a particular molecule. We can say this is molecule B. And basically that's the way cells with these receptors on the surfaces of their membranes recognize other molecules or substances or other cells. Okay, so let's first, first we can talk about how the phagocytes recognize dead cells. So when a cell dies, here's a cell, and when it dies, when um, it undergoes a process known as apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, on the surface of the cell will be these particular molecules, right? the cell will begin to express these molecules on its surface. An example of this is calreticulin. Now, 
the name Cal Reticulin is not particularly important. Rather, that the important part is that during op apoptosis, the there are specific molecules or markers expressed by the cell which is dying. And here comes a phagocyte, which we'll say is a macrophage. A macrophage. And on its surface, there are receptors which are specific for these molecules. So, for example, this receptor may be specific for cal reticulin. And using these receptors, the macrophage is able to recognize the dying cell. And so then it will respond to it which is the second thing. Okay? So it recognizes these dying cells by the markers that are being produced when it undergoes apoptosis. Now let's talk a bit about how foreign antigens are recognized in the body. So there are basically two ways they can be recognized. One is by common surface molecules. Sorry, common molecules. And these are molecules which are common, commonly found on invading pathogens. And there are, there's also a process known as opsonization, which allows for foreign antigens to be recognized. So let's look first at these common molecules. Many pathogens which are harmful to us have these common molecules for example, in bacteria, in gram-negative bacteria, gram-negative, I mean, that's just a classification of bacteria. In these gram-negative bacteria, they have a component in their cell wall known as lipopolysaccharide, or LPS. And a lot of these gram-negative bacteria have that in common. There's also molecules such as uh, mannose, molecules such as mannose, which are found on surfaces of bacteria. And molecules such as these, there's plenty more, but we're using these two as examples. Molecules such as these are found commonly in microorganisms which can cause us harm. As we said before, the phagocytes have specific receptors, and they also, they also have receptors for these particular common molecules. So on macrophages, macrophages, okay, they have these receptors called toll-like receptors. And now the reason they're called toll-like receptors is basically because the protein that makes up this receptor is similar to a protein produced by the toll gene, which is found in fruit flies. Okay, but that that's just where the name came from. So this recep these receptors called toll-like receptors, they are specific for these common molecules. So for example, LPS, the toll-like receptor, the TLR, specific for LPS is TLR4. Whereas the toll-like receptor for mannose is TLR2. And there's lots and lots of variations of these receptors and they account for many of the common molecules found on the surfaces or within pathogenic organisms. Now this is not strictly confined to just bacteria. The toll-like receptors also recognize molecules which are found in viruses or fungi such as um, single, single stranded RNA which is commonly found in viruses. Okay, so again, we see that it's a receptor, a specific receptor, which is able to recognize, recognize certain particles or certain molecules which make up these pathogenic organisms. Now, the really clever thing about this is that these, these molecules, they tend to be molecules which are essential to the bacteria or whatever, or whatever um, pathogen it may be. They are components which are not easily mutated out of out of the organism so they are vital components and therefore it means that the these phagocytes don't have to change their receptors very much to be effective against different types of bacteria or different types of organisms okay so now that we've looked at 
how the phagocytes recognize common molecules, let's, let us look at opsonization as a way of recognizing foreign antigens and um, inducing phagocytosis. So let me bring up a fresh page for that. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're gonna, now we're going to look at opsonization. 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 Now, opsonization in involves a molecule known as an opsonin. Opsonin. And what an opsonin is, is basically a molecule which coats foreign substances or cells. And basically what it does is it allows for phagocytes to recognize these foreign substances and it increases the effectiveness of phagocytosis. So um, let's draw a little microbe here. Right, this is a microbe or um, any other type of pathogen. And basically what these opsonins do is they are able to bind to these microbes and cover them. Right, they cover them in these opsonins. Now, opsonins can include things like antibodies, which we'll talk about in greater detail later, and also complement proteins. So complement is part of the humoral component of the innate immune system. Complement, all right, complement proteins. And an example of that is IC3B, IC3B. And we'll talk about complement in more detail later. And we'll talk about antibodies a bit more detail later. But just understand the concept of opsonins, that they, they're able to bind to these microbes and coat them. Now again, we see that this, is, this recognition is due to receptors on the surfaces of um, the phagocytes. So both neutrophils, neutrophils, both neutrophils and macrophages have these macrophages. Both neutrophils and macrophages have receptors on their surface which recognize these opsonins. So they're specific for these opsonins. And basically, because these opsonins coat the microbe, the neutrophils and the macrophages are able to see these microbes. They're able to recognize them as being foreign. So for example, if you have a whole bunch of cells, a whole bunch of cells, all right, let's quickly draw some cells. So if you have a whole bunch of cells and you are a phagocyte, you're looking at them. The way that opsonization helps with recognition is that it coats, it coats the one, the, the cells or the antigens which are foreign to the body. And so now it becomes quite obvious to the phagocyte which one is the non-self cell or antigen, and it can wipe it out, and phagocytose. And so basically what opsonization does is it increases the effectiveness and efficiency of phagocytosis. Okay, so now that we've looked at the recognition stage, the recognition stage of the immune response, let us now look at the actual response. So let us look at the mechanism of action of these phagocytes. So I'll scroll down for some space. Alright, so let's look at the mechanism of action. Mechanism of action. So here we have a foreign cell or foreign particle and here is a phagocyte phagocyte. And because of these receptors on the phagocyte surface, recognizing the opsonins on the surface of the, um, of the microbe or pathogen or the antigen, because these receptors recognize them, they, they basically what happens is the phagocyte approaches the microbe and it extends its cell membrane around the microbe. So if I draw another picture, it looks something like this. So we, here we have the phagocyte. And it basically surrounds the microbe. It surrounds it. All right. 
and then what happens is eventually here you have the phagocyte you eventually have the microbe or the antigen within within the phagocyte so they're encapsulated in this membrane and what this is called is a phagosome so you can see here that the phagocyte has literally ingested ingested the microbe or the foreign antigen it's encapsulated it in a phagosome within its um, within its cytoplasm now the last component of how the immune system works is to resolve and basically what's this, what this means for the foreign antigen or cell is for it to be destroyed so how does the how do the phagocytes destroy these foreign antigens well basically it's done by via an organelle which is a membrane bound structure within the within the phagocyte called a lysosome lysosome so we have this phagosome the phagosome within this within the within the phagocyte containing the foreign antigen or foreign cell all right and we have this structure within the phagocyte called a lysosome and what's in these lysosomes are degradative enzymes so these are enzymes which are able to break things down basically and so what happens is this organelle this lysosome fuses with the phagosome and they form what's called a phagolysosome and as you can see these enzymes come into contact with the um, the antigen and they basically break it down and destroy it. So let's just go through the process of phagocytosis again. So one, there's the recognition. So the phagocyte recognizes the foreign antigen. Number two, it responds by engulfing it and ingesting it and encapsulating it in a phagosome. And then number three, it resolves it by destroying the foreign antigen using enzymes found in the lysosome. Now, we've been focusing on phagocytosis, which is the main thing that phagocytes do, but they have other functions as well. Now, phagocytes are also able to release cytokines. Now, we mentioned this briefly in a previous video, and basically, like I said, they are chemical messengers. And these chemical messengers are released by both neutrophils and macrophages. And what they do is they communicate between cells to increase or decrease the immune response against um, infectious agents in the body. So examples of cytokines, I'll just drop a couple of names, are like tumor necrosis factor alpha or interleukins and we'll go into more detail then when we talk specifically about the neutrophils or specifically about the macrophages and just one more thing to mention about these phagocytes is about it's in regards to the macrophages now if you remember and I said that antigen presentation is the way that the immune si the innate immune system, sorry, the innate immune system, the way it communicates with the adaptive immune system. Antigen presentation. Now, the macrophages are able to present antigen. They are known as antigen presenting cells. And we'll go into this in, more, in a bit more detail later on, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, you know, aside from phagocytosis, macrophages and neutrophils also have other roles in releasing cytokines or in the case of macrophages, presenting antigens to the adaptive immune cells. Okay, so that's a basic overview of, I mean, the concepts in regards to phagocytes.